Business owners often become unstuck in their business due to these two key things that they forget about. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Michael Mojo. I'm the founder of Mojo Human Performance Institute, where we focus on business, mindset and lifestyle hacking for driven mofos. And the reason why I do these is that most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them, especially if you're one of those driven people out there because you've probably sacrificed a lot, given up a lot, and you really want to achieve a lot of great things in your life. That's why we built the community that we have. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today is that for every level of business growth, there are two key areas that a business owner must grow in and really anyone for that matter. And these are two areas that are hugely underestimated in most people's business growth or even their lifestyle and just their personal growth. And those two key things are that most people don't focus on the skills that they need to consistently grow into the areas that they want to grow in. And then the second thing is they don't focus focus on the mindset growth that they need in order to achieve the lifestyle that they want or even the business that they want. And those two things often just take a bit of time and the right structures, the right strategy and the right people that you're around in order to help them to grow. But what I find is that so many business owners, they just want to remain ignorant. It's like there's this thing that if they don't already know it, then it must mean that they're stupid or they're dumb or I don't know. But there's this lack of self-awareness where if you want to grow, it seems so obvious that if you do want to grow, you have to grow your skill set. And so for business owners, especially when you're growing a business, there are just there's just so much that you've got to consistently learn. Like if you're in a startup business, you've got to learn marketing. You've got to learn sales. You've got to learn branding. You've got to learn social media posting if you're using social media. You might have to learn SEO or you've got to learn some things about the internet and how the internet works or how you generate customers or generate leads. So there's just so much that you've got to learn. And then add on top of that finances as well. So that's a huge area that most don't learn. Then as the business scales, you then start to have to figure out how do you hire the right people to bring around you? So how do you hire the right vendors? How do you negotiate with suppliers? So you've got to learn negotiation as well. You've got to start bringing on staff. So how do you start hiring the right staff? How do you know how to create the right job roles? How do you do all of that? Then how do you lead them? How do you manage them? How do you set accountabilities? What software do you use? There's just so much that they have to learn. But most business owners just get so stagnant and stale or what they do is they think that they can hire everyone, but then to hire those people, you've got to have the right hiring strategy to hire the right people, whether they be the right external vendors that are going to come in and help you out, or whether they're going to be the right staff that you're going to onboard. Every now and again, some businesses get lucky and their first hire is fucking amazing and it helps them to get ahead really, really quickly. Most businesses though, they just hire people, throw cash at them, And those people just end up using a lot of that money or that money just disintegrates because of the poor hires. And so you might have a whole bunch of staff that just sit around or they're doing stuff, but it's normally just creating more problems in the business because there's a lack of management or there could be a lack of leadership so that no one really knows what everyone's driving towards. So there's a cultural problem. And then that just chews through cash and burns cash. So these are the common problems that so many businesses face when they go from startup to scale. And then as they start to scale as well, the leader has to become better at driving the vision, understanding how to manage people or at least lead people with the vision and find areas of growth. Those things can massively, massively help a business as it scales, but most business owners just don't grow those skills. And so they're the same people that they've always been. And so what you'll see is they create these huge bottlenecks where their natural strategy is just to work their ass off. And so back in the old days when they're an individual who was really great at their skill set, they just work hard. And if I want to make more money, I'll work harder. But eventually all that that does is when you've got a whole team of people, you'll be working your ass off and most other people in the team you'll despise because you go, why are all these assholes sitting around not doing anything or how can they not produce results because I've got 10 team members and no one's getting the results that I'm getting and I'm working harder than everybody else. I'm producing all the income and everyone else is just sort of playing around for scraps. And now I've got to pay them my hard earned money and now I'm not getting a wage, but I've got to pay them. And then so it just creates this massive frustration and resentment in most businesses. And so when I speak to most scaling business owners, they'll complain about how shit staff are or what a problem they are. And I've been through this as well many, many times, hence why I know these patterns so well. But what it takes is you've got to really develop those skill sets and you almost need to be aware one to three steps ahead of where your business growth is and know the skill sets that you need to grow into. Because if you do that, then the business will keep growing and those bottlenecks will keep opening up in advance. The other thing that happens is the psychology doesn't grow. The psychology from a startup business to a scaling business is completely different. And the first thing is, is that when you're a startup business owner and you've got only a couple of employees and you're just trying to make cash and to make sure that the business is profitable 
and you're looking for you know product to market fit or service to market fit. When you're doing all these things, you have to still learn a lot. The psychology of a startup business owner is you've got to figure out how to go hard, how to fail fast, how to make a lot of mistakes. So you've got to be okay with those things. A lot of people who, let's say they have a corporate job, and then now they've saved $300,000 and then now they're gonna go out and start a business, they will normally destroy that 300 grand really, really quickly because they'll do all the wrong things. If they are afraid of failing, of making mistakes, and they also don't have the drive to almost work seven days a week, then what will happen is they'll just end up running out of cash or they'll just sort of hit rock bottom and they'll cruise along and they'll make just enough to survive. That'll be about it until they give up. You need to learn a lot about yourself in the startup phase. But then another huge chasm that business owners have to jump is as they go from a startup business owner to a scaling business owner, where let's say they now have five, 10, 15 staff, is they have to jump this huge psychological chasm where their value doesn't come from being flat out all the time. And so I see a lot of business owners who either hire me for one-on-one coaching or they will come to our business growth odyssey event where it's a year-long program where we work with business owners to grow and to help them scale their business. And what I find is that the psychological pattern that needs to change really comes down to them understanding that their value and their worth doesn't come from working hard. And a lot of them, they feel like they still have this mentality of if I'm not the first one to work and I'm not the last one to leave and I'm not the one who's running around and looking like I'm doing everything, then staff will start to think, well, you know, what do they do? And it's a mindset that they have when they were an employee. And there would have been a whole bunch of other employees that said, look at the boss. The boss does fuck all. They just sit around all day, don't do anything. They go out for lunch, they play golf, they go go away on the weekends. They don't do anything and look at them. They earn all this money and they tell us what to do. Bunch of fucking assholes. And so that mentality normally ends up ingraining itself in someone who wants to start a business. So they'll work really, really hard. But when they go to scale their business, they still have that mentality that all these other people are watching them and they don't want to be that business owner who looks like they're not working harder than everybody else. So they just end up going flat out all the time. The problem with that is because they haven't grown psychologically and they haven't made that psychological shift yet from a startup business owner or an employee to a scaling business owner, normally what they'll find is that the majority of their staff are also running around like crazy and it looks like everyone's really, really busy, but at the same time, there's not a lot of productivity happening. So you start to find that there are cash flow constraints, you start to find that there's poor leadership, there's poor management, there's a lot of stress in the team as well. You'll see people starting to overwork and underwork. Like there'll be a whole bunch of people that if they're not given direction will normally just sort of look like they're doing things, but they'll be shuffling papers around. That'll piss the business owner off and it'll piss good management off and and good team members. Then there'll be a whole bunch of other people who are overworking to make up for the loss in productivity of the underworkers. And so it creates this whole weird dynamic in most businesses. In order to change that, the business owner needs to spend more time now planning, preparing, thinking through things, thinking about what could go right, thinking about what could go wrong, and leading their team, leading it through the purpose, the mission, the values, the culture of the business, and making everyone feel like they're part of something and really driving that culture into everybody, reminding everybody that they're valued and that they're great at what they do, and then building a management team who can manage people and keep accountabilities happening in the team, and then slowly you watch the business start to scale. But what I find is that chasm, that big jump, the psychological shift that a business owner needs to go from feeling like their value and their worth comes from working hard to thinking hard and being smart is a huge, huge gap. And most business owners can't do it because they feel like if they're not working hard, then the business is going to fail. And so that's really a psychological shift that most business owners need to make, but most of them don't. I've watched people who've been in business for 20 to 30 years. Even my dad does it. My dad's been in business for 20 to 30 years, and he's still that person that has to work hard, that has to do everything that you know, feels like if he's not doing something all the time, then he's not going to be valued. And he's on holidays at the moment. And I know that that's still a problem for him because he deals with a lot of stress, a lot of frustration. He's tried to grow the business multiple times. And every time he grows it, it just stresses him out more. So then he downsizes it back to a level with only a couple of staff members so that then he can manage it. Because he's trying to be a leader, he's trying to be a manager, and he's also trying to be a doer. And so he's trying to be everything to everybody in the team, but also to the customers as well. And so he just can't scale it. And so, yeah, I've grown up watching that. So anyway, it's something to think about driven mofos out there. It's really, really important to make sure that you're consistently growing your skill set and thinking about what skills do I need to keep developing in order to keep my business growing. And this is just for life in general. Like if you want to get fitter, you need to develop skills in order to be able to do that. If you want to get healthy, you need to develop skills. There's things that you need to learn. If you want to develop your finances, there are skills that you need to learn. If you're looking to invest, you need to develop a whole bunch of skills. Now, most people don't think that they need to develop those skills. It's it's so weird. 
especially in the information age, the biggest ignorances that I see in a lot of people is that they hop online, they watch a couple of YouTube videos and they think that they're experts because I've watched a couple of people, but that it, it takes a lot more than that. You really need to immerse yourself in learning. You also need to be around the right people consistently because when you make mistakes, you need to know how to change quick and make better decisions and pull things back on track. If you're not doing that, things can fall apart really, really quickly. And this is why a lot of people I see in investing make huge mistakes because they throw a heap of money into a market. They don't know what they're doing. They're not surrounded by the right people. They've watched a heap of YouTube clips and read a couple of books and they go, I got this. And then bang, they've just lost all their money. And then they go, you know, investing stupid, it's dumb. And then they just go and do what everybody else does, which keeps them average. But it's because they just didn't do the right steps. In this day and age, we don't need more information. What we need is we need to learn how to execute things effectively. We need to know how to think through things effectively and do things in the right order with the right people around us who are guiding us so that when we make mistakes, we can stay on track or pull things back on track really, really quickly. So a community is really important. And also making sure that you're surrounding yourself with the right information, with the right steps, with the right frameworks in order to be able to execute is huge. So it's the execution part that most people miss now and also the community part that most people miss in this day and age. And that's even why in the information age, there's more information than ever, but that doesn't mean that people are getting better results better than ever. It just means that now they're overloaded with a whole bunch of different ideas and thoughts and they're still using trial and error to figure it out. Anyway, I hope that helps River Mofos. If this is resonating with you and you're really enjoying this stuff, make sure you jump across to our No BS Business Hacks group on Facebook. You can just jump in there. It's free. You go to the search bar, type in No BS Business Hacks. Jump in there. Also, hit me up on any of my socials as well. You can go to any of my social media platforms and check it out. It's Michael Mojo double zero on all the platforms apart from Instagram. We had someone hack my account, and so I had to change the O's and the zeros around. But if you just type in Michael Mojo, it should come up. But yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm just throwing out so much free resources out there to be able to help more and more people. And um, I, I do daily stuff in the No BS Business Hacks group. So please jump in there and join us. Anyway, Driven Mofos, I really appreciate it. Before I go, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of those out there as well who have been sharing this podcast. Al views and our or our listeners have been going up massively week after week after week. So I really appreciate all of you who are sharing this uh, and, and letting other people know about this podcast and also sharing it on your social media platforms and tagging me in it as well. It does make a massive difference and I'm doing this stuff, you know, all of the cost and all of the time associated with this stuff. It, it does cost me a lot when it comes to time and also setting everything up and making sure that my team can edit everything. Um, it does cost us a lot for this free service, but I just want to do it to be able to help people. You know, I really want to get this out there to more people because I think that life is meant to be lived. I think that most people just don't ever really even get close to living their full potential. And especially business owners, like most people start a business to create some form of freedom in their life, like an operational freedom to be able to travel. But what I see is that most business owners just get stuck. They end up working their ass off. They're burnt out. They're tired. They're frustrated. The majority of them go through divorces. They end up with these huge cash flow constraints. And some people, a business actually destroys their life, not create it. So if I can share more information, and help more people out, I hope, yeah, I hope that this impacts and helps someone. So anyway, thank you to all those who have been sharing this and uh, have been helping it trend on some of these, uh, on some of the platforms as well. So thank you so much. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking massive goals. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.